Greetings, my friends. It is a joy to welcome you to worship on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm so glad you've joined us. If you're joining us for the first time, all that you need to participate fully in our worship, you'll find at our church website, stjohnschurchph.ca, to which you'll find a link in the video description. We begin our service of spiritual communion on the third page of the order of service, announcing the good news of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to you, Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. In the waters of baptism, you gave us new birth. At your table, you nourish us with heavenly food. And in your goodness and mercy, you guide us beyond the terrors of evil and death to your Father's home to dwell in eternal light. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Peter. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, 
what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. May these words be faithful to the written word of Scripture and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. This fourth Sunday of Easter is often called Good Shepherd Sunday. Because on this day in the church calendar, we hear readings from scripture that draw on this ancient image of God's goodness and loving care of God, and particularly God in Jesus Christ being the shepherd, tending and keeping the sheep, tending and keeping God's people, us. There is perhaps no more beloved and familiar chapter in the whole Bible than the 23rd Psalm. Many people only need to hear the first line, the Lord is my shepherd, before they are ready to recite, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Even people who aren't altogether familiar with the Bible may recognize this passage. And it is the venerable King James Version that most know best. We read that version just a minute ago. I have been amazed at the powerful resonance that this psalm has for people in difficult situations. I and many other clergy and lay ministers have had the experience of reading the 23rd Psalm at the bedside of people who were near death who had been unresponsive for hours, even days, who upon hearing us say, the Lord is my shepherd, began to speak, 
or at least to move their lips in recitation of the psalm. I'm sure you can imagine how profoundly moving it is to see that trust in God the shepherd as a person is quite literally walking in the valley of the shadow of death. In our tradition, perhaps only the Lord's Prayer has as much resonance or is as familiar. Maybe the reason for this is that the imagery in the 23rd Psalm is some of the most beautiful and comforting in the whole Bible. It invites us to a place of trust, a place of repose and plenty, a place of mercy and blessing. For Christians, the psalm is imbued with the presence of Christ, our Good Shepherd, a theme echoed in today's Gospel reading. And Christ as the Good Shepherd, an image that draws out some of our earliest Christian experiences and memories. Most every Sunday school has a picture somewhere of Jesus holding a fluffy white lamb in his arms. We are taught in our earliest days that Christ is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Hearing this again, and especially at those times when we need God most, brings great comfort and solace, and so it should. But the imagery of the 23rd Psalm is not just about calm and peace. This text is not purely placid or sentimental. This is food for the Christian journey, hearty and substantial, food for a people on the go. I was opened up to this understanding after reading a short commentary by biblical scholar Joel Lamont, who asks his readers to consider the fact that the entire 23rd Psalm describes a journey, a journey that God oversees and leads. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The psalmist is on the go. He is active. He's marching to the water, down the path, through the valley. The closing verse says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In Hebrew, the word for follow is radaf, a more accurate translation of which is pursue. So goodness and mercy shall pursue me all my life as I travel along. A strange word to use, perhaps, in light of all the talk of enemies and dark valleys, where something being in pursuit of us might cause fear and disquiet. But the psalmist, on the move as he is, seems to say, with God as my shepherd, only goodness and mercy will be in pursuit of me, not all of those other things that would bring fear. One more little bit from the commentary. The journey that the psalmist is on consists of walking in the paths of righteousness. The Hebrew word magalim, which is translated here as paths, whenever it appears in the rest of the Old Testament, is translated not as paths, but as tracks or entrenchments or even ruts, the kinds of impressions left in the ground by the wheels of an ox cart, for instance. Laman says this about the Hebrew. Walking with Yahweh is a matter of finding your groove and a righteous groove at that. To get into the righteous groove is to live in a way that promotes and sustains right relationships all around you with the community and with God. To live this way 
glorifies the name or the reputation of God. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Here's the point. Christians who hear the words of this beloved psalm should not just hear them as quiet and comfortable. Rather, like so many passages of scripture, the 23rd Psalm presents us with both consolation and with challenge. The consolation is that the Lord is our shepherd. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, for us. The challenge is to view Jesus also as the one making straight the path of righteousness before us, establishing in no uncertain terms the way to follow, leading us in righteousness and pursuing us in goodness and mercy. But the path of righteousness did not lead Jesus to green pastures, at least not right away. It led him through the darkest valley of all, the righteous groove in which our Lord walked led him to the cross. And in this Easter season, we are reminded that the stakes of discipleship are just as high for us. As St. John wrote in his first letter, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Being led along the shepherd's path requires of us the courage to walk with him, even in the way of the cross. When we walk these paths of righteousness, we walk with God. And in his rising from death, Jesus has shown us again in no uncertain terms that ultimately, in God's good time, the way of the cross leads always to the path of life. During this strange and trying time in our common life, when many of us feel that we are walking in the shadow of death, and we have this feeling perhaps more acutely than we've ever had it before, let us learn well these venerable and ancient words. The Lord is my shepherd. And hear them as telling us that God is on the go and we are going with him. He does not abandon us on the way. When we walk in the way of righteousness, it is God in Jesus Christ who stands beside us. He is there to cheer and to guide to lay down his life even for us, his cherished flock. Goodness and mercy follow. The road we walk goes through the way of death, but leads always, always to the way of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia and amen. I now invite you to join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our intercessions are taken from the Easter Litany, located on page 122 of the Book of Alternative Services. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches and all individuals may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Lord God, help us to remember that you are always with us. Grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. As many face anxiety and confusion regarding food, work, or shelter, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. that by his power, wars, famines, and pandemics may cease through all of the earth. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. For all who are ill or worried about becoming ill, we pray for the doctors, nurses, and scientists, and all who are helping those who are ill. Lord, we pray that you will reveal the light of your presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying. Give them comfort and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. For the military personnel killed in the helicopter crash in the Ionian Sea and their grieving families. God of compassion, support, and love. That those who have died may reign with you in heaven and their loved ones may be comforted in their darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us. Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Amen. And now, friends, Confident in the reconciliation promised in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us humbly confess our sins. 
to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with us always. Amen. And now we undertake an act of spiritual communion. During this time of social distancing, when we cannot gather to celebrate the Holy Eucharist together, we invite Jesus into our hearts, there to abide, guiding us, cheering us, being with us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now I invite you to say with me. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Let us spend a few moments in silent contemplation of the great mystery and joy of our salvation. Now, in the words that Jesus gave his disciples, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now friends, I invite you to join Elizabeth Barlow as we sing together the wonderful hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>